What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Nasher. Welcome back to the channel, and... <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, I, um... <sighs> NXT Halloween Havoc was something. I will give it that. It was, uh... There we go. Sorry, guys, my book accidentally knocked my tripod over. Anyway, yeah, Halloween Havoc was, um... <clears throat> It was interest interesting, to say the very least. I'm I will admit, I will admit some of the some of the matches that were on on the card were pretty much everything everything that we had expected. But the rest of them, honestly, I just don't even have the words for it. So I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm just gonna get. I'm just gonna get straight into the results and the and the review of NXT Halloween Havoc, and it kicks off with with the NXT North American title between <clears throat> excuse me between Tony D'Angelo and of course none other than Oba Femi for the, again again for the NXT North American title under tables ladders and scares rules. Normally, you would have to climb a ladder and retrieve the title, but Obafemi, <clears throat> but but both the ruler and, and the Don wanted this to be to be by pinfall or submission. The and um, we got it. We got a pinfall or or submission based match, and we thought we honestly had had thoughts that Obafemi Obafemi was gonna was going to take back the title, and basically restart his reign as the ruler of of NXT but this was honestly as chaotic as it can get i mean tony got got speared got speared through a table he kicked out of a of a fall of, out of a fall from fall from grace grace power bomb we saw we saw the family show up <clears throat> um you know and you know we we even also saw saw Tony D'Angelo spear Obafemi through the ropes and onto a ladder, which completely snapped in half. We saw Rizzo attack Obafemi with a crowbar to the back of the neck, which allowed <clears throat> which allowed both Stax and Luca to hit a shatter machine onto Oba using a chair, mind you. And it took all that plus a spine buster to Obafemi through the table for Tony to retain the North American title. <clears throat> I will I I will say though, um I think I think I think this is just just the beginning of what Obafemi is gonna have in store for NXT moving forward because after after his after his reign as as North American champion, I can honestly see him just automatically go automatically going straight into into the main into the main roster and potentially just dominating WWE potentially as either US champion, IC champion, maybe even World Heavyweight champion for all we know, or perhaps not going to Obviously, we're, I'm not getting ahead of myself here with, with this, but maybe potentially as WWE champion. But of course, all those titles, respectively, are being held <clears throat> by by Cody Rhodes, Gunther, Braun Breaker, and of course LA Knight. So it's possible, but we will have to wait and see. But overall, overall, the match itself, itself was actually pretty good. Not <sighs> this was one of those matches that. That we kind of we kind of expected the expected Obafemi to win, but this one completely un unexpected. We didn't think that Tony D was gonna pull it off for a second time, but sure enough, he did. So I'm gonna give this one give this one four four stars. If the family hadn't have gotten involved, yes, Obafemi probably would would have walked away with the title. But I don't. But at but at the same time, Tony's Tony is one of those guys who who doesn't really give up all that much, and it puts 
and when his back is against the wall, that's when that's when usually the Don thrives. And tonight he thrives like it was nothing. So props to the Don for retaining the NXT North American title. Speaking of championships, <clears throat> next up we have a actually a dream match between between the reunited team of Cora Jade and the NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez taking on excuse me excuse me taking on the the international team of Julia and Stephanie Vacor. This was actually this one this one was another pretty well unexpected matchup because when you look at at Roxanne Perez right now as of right now, she is the longest reigning champion in, in WWE right now. Obviously, just a day ahead, get this, ready? A day ahead of, of Cody Rhodes. Right now, Ro Roxanne is sitting at 202, 203. I think Cody is at 202, I believe. So, that's pretty crazy. And if and, and the weird thing is, if Obafemi hadn't have lost the title... In um in Saint in Saint Louis, he would have been been the longest reigning champion right now, which is insane. Which is insane. So you so you so so you look at so you look at, at, at this match and you and you think to yourself, who's 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 gonna turn on who? Because when because when you because if you guys if you guys recall three about three and a half years ago. Cora Jade attacked Roxanne Perez from behind, all because she was the one that challenged for the NXT Women's Title, <clears throat> title, and not Cora Jade. Why? Simple. Because because Roxanne Perez was out was had had got had got taken out backstage, but Roxanne Perez did not want to give up, and so yeah, that kind of happened. And not only that. Not not only that, but think about this. They were also at the time NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. So when you when you when you look at that and the rivalry that that both Cora and Roxanne had in what in what was what was back then known as NXT 2.0, it's something that I nobody was expecting. It was literally women's wrestling version of Champa and Gargano which is which is incredible and when you look at at the team of Julia and 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 um <clears throat> and uh Stephanie Vacor obviously yes we obviously yes it's been well documented that both that both these women had faced each other multiple times over multiple championships not just in in Japan but pretty much everywhere else that that they've been and obviously obviously there was a mutual respect and that and that just and that mutual respect went from just that to to a straight up friendship which honestly it's weird it's weird because both Cora and Roxanne were expecting one of those two to turn on to turn on on the other and and for a lot of us as as hardcore NXT fans, we were expecting Cora J to turn on Roxanne Perez again, or perhaps vice versa, and nothing happened. This was a straight up tag team match that went that went that went the complete distance. <clears throat> and we even also saw Ro Roxanne Perez take a devastating dragon screw leg whip, which can really tear tear ligaments. From your knee, which could potentially give, which could potentially force you to have surgery, which we all know, <clears throat> which we all know that could have potentially have been the case. But, but this was back and forth, absolutely incredible, absolutely insane. It it was exactly that. the The name of of the PLE Halloween Havoc. The name it's the last word Havoc. That was what this match would had. Nothing but pure havoc. <clears throat> and it was in the final moments of the match where Julia hit hit, hit Roxanne Perez with um 
with a what I, I think what a Spanish fly I think it was and then and then Valkor hits Perez with a devastating corkscrew moonsaw to or or so or a corkscrew 450 which I think is a Phoenix splash um to pin the champion and now 70 Valkor is the one who will be who could potentially be next in line for a shot at the NXT women's title but no but here's the question though where does Julia lie in in that in that scenario? Is she gonna allow her friend to go after the title, or is she or is she gonna end up turn or is she gonna turn heel on on Valkor and want and want to take take that opportunity for herself? Honestly, it's too hard. That just that part alone, it's too it's too hard to call. No one really knows for sure. However, I do know that. At the end of the match, when both Julia and Vakor were celebrating, we saw Zarya make her her appearance at at Halloween Havoc, standing in Skybox, just licking her lips like, "Oh, woo, fresh meat! I got me some fresh meat." Literally, that was her. In in my opinion. That was her thought process, like, oh, I got fresh me. I'm ready to kick to kick some ass. And uh, yeah, per that was pretty much that. Honestly, this was probably probably the probably the best match of the whole card. Absolutely amazing. This proves that like I'm being real, if this match did not prove that NXT and WWE altogether is where the best wrestle. I don't know what is proof. I don't know what proof people need for them to realize that WWE and NXT altogether is where the best wrestle. I will say before b before I move into the next match, I will say I feel I I will say as far as as far as Cora Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez goes. As far as they go, knowing knowing Cora J, she's always wanted to go after the NXT Women's Title, and I think she's one. She decided to befriend Roxanne again, just so she can get closer to the NXT Women's Title. I feel like that might be that that might be the case, <clears throat> but we will have to wait and see over time. But moving on, next up we have Andre Chase versus Ridge Holland. In an ambulance match, and I'm gonna be honest, I feel like this match should not have been on the card. And the reason for it is simple. This match was way too predictable. I'm being I'm 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 being serious. This match was way, way too predictable. We knew that because we knew that that Andre Chase was going was going at this alone. We knew that that Rich Holland had taken out every single person in you know you know on you know in Chase U, Andre Chase, Riley Osborne, Duke Hudson, literally broke Thea Hale's heart and put her into shambles. And um and it's weird it, it's weird because this all had to do with what happened at No Mercy. And we all know what happened at, at No Mercy. We saw we saw Fraser and Axiom regain the NXT tag team titles from Chase U, which again, which we all saw. We all saw what happened at, at No Mercy, and we also saw what happened on, on NXT from you know in, in the weeks ahead that led to tonight. And in my opinion. This match should not have been on on the card. If anything, I feel like, in my honest opinion, and I, and I'm, I'm probably I'm probably gonna probably gonna get some heat for saying this, but I feel like the NXT Tag Team Titles should have been should have been defended on this card. It, it, it should have it should have been a part of this card and not and and not this match. Yes, obviously, yes, there was there was a lot of chaos. <clears throat> yes, obviously, the you know the you know, the announce table got you know got you know came you know had came into play, 
it, there was chaos all all over all all over the building but the way it ended and the way that it you know as far as like how it ended we knew full well it was going to happen as and we saw Rich Holland hit the redeemer on on Andre Chase threw him, and he threw him and he threw Chase in into the ambulance shut the door and that was that and the weird thing is, is that as is what is what did Andre Chase in and it was actually in the closing moments of the match where we saw Andre Chase attempt, attempting to close the door but Rich Holland gouged the eyes of Andre Chase and that was what did it man that was that right there was what did Andre Chase in and that was what led led on to Chase losing that match obviously yes obviously yes Andre Chase is probably going to want to get get more revenge on 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 Rich Holland at some point but as far as Rich goes I mean he he claims that he's done he claims he's done done with Chase U but I don't think Chase U <clears throat> is done excuse me is done with Rich Holland but overall I mean the match I mean the match was okay it I mean it it had its ups but mostly it was just a downer in in, in my opinion I will I will be I will be optimistic and I will I will give it three stars um just because of the fact that because that Andre Chase is is a former two-time tag team champion by by defeating Andre Chase Rich Holland has put himself in line for potentially future title opportunities so that right there is de is is definitely a plus but but other than that that's pretty much it on that's pretty much it to, to be quite honest but now we move into the NXT Women's North American title where we found out last week that that Fatal Influence <clears throat> spun the wheel and it ended up being Spinner's Choice, which we found out during during the countdown show. It will be that it would be Kalani Jordan versus all the members of Fatal Influence in a gauntlet match where where it would be Kalani Jordan versus Jasmine next. Then, then Kalani versus JC, and then Kalani versus Fallon. Jordan was able to, was able to get past get past Jasmine next relatively fast. Fast, in fact, I think it only took her like maybe maybe ten minutes at best, like five maybe ten minutes at best. But then, but it was but it was against JC Jane that was that made all the difference. Yes, yes, JC Jane did lose via a roll up if you if you can believe it. But the moment Fallon Henley was coming into the ring, a cheap shot to Kalani Jordan, and Jordan still kicked out. But as Kalani Jordan was about to win, Jasmine Nix showed up, JC Jane showed up, and she hit a frog splash onto Fallon Henley. Fallon got, got the knees up, hit Kalani with a shiny with a shiny wizard, and pins her to become the North American champion. Which obviously, again, we knew that that Fatal Influence had had a plan. We knew they they had a plan. This was basically it, and my and my instincts were telling me that they were gonna that they were going to <clears throat> to bring in a match where Kalani had basically had basically nothing to gain but everything to lose, and pretty much a gauntlet match was exactly that. So. Now that now that Fallon Henley is the new women's North American champion, there's really, really no telling what can happen next. But but it was right after them that got that made things a little bit interesting, as Zarya literally attacked all the members of Fatal Influence, and I don't know if she wants the women's North American title or if she just or if she showed up just to make a statement. But we do know. That this Tuesday on NXT, Zarya will be making her in-ring debut, <clears throat> which potentially could be against Jasmine Nix, or it could be against someone else entirely, which obviously we do not know. But, but this was again just like, um, just like, just like the previous match. This one was pretty predictable for the for the most part. I will get, I will be a little optimistic and give it three stars, but. There, there was no way Kalani, Kalani was gonna win. There was no shot. 
But if she did, though, I'm being real. If she did win that that gauntlet match, she'll have earned it. She she would have earned it 100%. But obviously, obviously, it is what it is. And <clears throat> that brings us to the main event for the NXT title. Devil's Playground, Ethan Page, Trick Williams. What can I say? I mean, it's weird because... Because we we had all seen Trick Williams as this guy who who started his journey in, in WWE. First and foremost, becoming a, I guess a general, if you will, to Apollo Crews when he was the Intercontinental Champion during the pandemic. <clears throat> then then he then he just then he went over to NXT, became a um, and became. And became uh, Carmel Hayes' uh, frontman, helped him become become <clears throat> become a two-time uh, North American champion, helped him become become NXT champion. All the accolades that Melo had in in NXT, Trick helped him helped him with them. Yet, and now, you know, obviously Trick, former North American champion, men's Iron Survivor winner. And now a two-time NXT champion. And also think about this. He also think about this. He is actually the he's actually one of the first black guys to main event an NXT PLE. Obviously, the question was, who's the other? Carmelo Hayes. And we all know those two made history at Stan and Deliver back in April. I'm 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 being real, that match proved that both Trick and Melo belong in WWE and tonight was basically was basically Trick's opportunity I guess if you will <clears throat> to show the world just how dangerous he can be when his back is truly against the wall and against a guy like like Ethan Page who basically is as dangerous as they come I this was I mean his back was literally against the wall. Trick's back was truly against the wall. And this was non-stop. Back and forth. Near fall after near fall. And literally an ego's edge from from from, from the top of the steps onto onto the onto the, the announce table. Bolts. Screws. Excuse me. Ladders, chairs, tables, pumpkins. Literally, the you know the timekeeper area. It from 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 within from within the WWE universe. This it went all over the place, and even and Trick even also got busted open from his from his stomach. His he 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 had busted ribs by being put through the steel steps and we all thought that trick was going to be done we all thought that the referee was going to call it trick was like hell no i'm finishing this and sure enough sure enough he did finish it hitting <clears throat> hitting even even page with a with a trick shot to retain the nxt title but it was a after the match that that i i, I know i know i said this earlier on but Made things a little bit interesting as we saw Ridge Holland jump Trick Williams from behind and hit him with the Redeemer and out came the Hall of Famer Bubba Ray Dudley attacking Ethan Page and Ridge Holland to save Trick Williams and uh, I think it's safe to say that we might see Bubba Ray Dudley come out of retirement at some point. But with but with NXT taking place inside inside the ECW arena in a couple of, in 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 about a couple weeks, who knows? I mean, it's possible. It is very very possible. But congrats to Trick Williams on retaining retaining the NXT title. <clears throat> I'm being real. This was this was pretty chaotic. This was incredible. I'm I'm. I'm gonna give 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 this one four stars, and I feel like if if Ethan Page had have done further damage to <clears throat> to the ribs, 
Ethan Page would would have won because with with that spot with the spot where Trix Ribs hit the steel steps, if Ethan Page had done more damage to the ribs in that spot, hands down, Ethan Page would have won. He easily would have won. But but it is what it is. But we now move from Halloween Havoc to Crown Jewel next this coming Saturday. <clears throat> Cannot wait for that, but that will do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, <clears throat> make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are new to the channel, you guys want more premium live event predictions and results in the future, then make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and follow me on all of my social media. All of my ads will be in the description below, as will the info to my fan mail. It will also be in the description as well. And on that, this is your boy Nash <clears throat> signing out.